Hello everyone, this is Bytes coming to you with a new Let's Play. We are episode 3 and I am walking through my town. Uh, you see the very nice artisan houses, it's very busy on the street. I am getting run over by an actual um, carriage and I am walking in between my humble servants, uh, I mean the citizens of my small town. You see my uh, main ship over there and this is actually um, the town I have been building so far. Last time we uh, got to these guys, the artisans and we actually already have quite a big city. We are doing very well on the balance side and for this time we're going to work on a few different things. Uh, we probably want to update our storage here, uh, build a depot so we can actually store more of these goods so we don't overflow. And then of course the most important thing we want to do is get into this shipbuilding. And I'm actually going to start off with building uh, two schooners for example. Uh, because these can help me to connect the two um, uh, islands I have here. Uh, they are quite small, quite nimble, but they of course can also carry some goods, that's a very good start. And then some other thing we also want to do is set up the production of weapons, because we are playing on not the easiest mode, not the most difficult either, and we probably want to make sure we do have some weapons uh, to build military ships. Uh, we already have here the needed things for steel beams and what I will do is I will go to um, this production chain being the weapons and I do see that these have a production time of 1 minute 30. That is it's roughly the same as uh, one steel beam production for two of these. And I'm just gonna add two of these uh, factories next to um, my already existing steel beam production. Be um, because then I can just turn off one of those whenever if I need lockout, more weapons. We right and then when I have sufficient weapons, I can turn those two off and turn this one on. And my production chain will still be in balance because these are exactly half as fast as one of those. So that's my way of keeping production of my steel beams more or less acceptable and not having to duplicate the entire uh, production chain. So we are building our ships, that's very nice. We are building weapons. And one thing I also want to do is build a few of those depots. Because that will help me to scale a little bit how much I can store right here. So I'm going to maybe put them behind my shipyard. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. I will also change the road here. So I'm optimizing the use of my space that I have. It's not very important now, but maybe later on it can make the difference. So we do have two depots and that will mean we can store more goods. So that's very good. Um, and then of course um, we are gonna focus this episode on making sure those artisans are happy. Um, and can go to the next level eventually. We're probably not gonna get there in just one episode. Uh, but we should get started. Uh, the things we need are beer, a variety theater, canned food and sewing machines. And I think the canned fruit is actually the most important one to start looking into first. Because on this island we do have the red pepper fertility. So um, we do have some anarchists that want to join our town, that's nice. It does help me in quite a nice way, so I'm gonna say yes to them. Although the doctor will not be happy at all with that. But I need the money. I get a lot of a voice. 
things that are actually nice, and that's a very, very nice thing to, to have. Alright, so red peppers. How do we get started? Um, one thing we should know is that for these uh, things to be built, we do need artisans. And we do need windows, so that means we need to get into a whole new production facility. And it's actually in that way that I do not want to have artisans on this island. I just want to make sure I have the red pepper and the, the beef production here. And then bring it all to the other side. Actually, only the red pepper here might also be sufficient. Um, so let me maybe... Um, I keep on the finest around me. Move to the other side of the island. And we're gonna set up shop here for those red peppers. We're taking every care. Guilty until you prove yourself innocent. So I did do that in uh, fast forward mode, um, but what we have now is a quite messy uh, but the first production of red pepper fertilities. Um, so that's a good start. I do have some room for expansion later on. But I'm not gonna use that just yet. Um, and of course, we do have those Still first small schooners produced. And what I am going to already set up right now is um, a connection between uh, us. Oh, the, the names are horrible. I'm actually gonna change them before I do this. Um, because this will be Brussels. It's all how you're and this will not be Oslev but Antwerp. There we go. I am from Belgium. Um, and that's gonna help me to keep sane, uh, or to stay sane rather, while I use these things. I'm gonna use one of my ships to take the red pepper, all of it, from this island to my main island and then go back and forth. So it will just do this. That's it. Um, I'm gonna create also a group that is called Alt World. Uh, this is a good idea uh, for new players as well, because you will have in the end a lot of trade routes that are very difficult to read, and then it helps you to quickly find back your trade routes. So a bit of structuring is everybody's friend, um, and that will just be good for you. So this person is starting to bring peppers to the other side. Um, which of course is a good thing. But we will not be able to process them whatsoever for as long as we do not have windows. So what we need to set up here is um, some sand mines, glass makers, lumberjacks and window makers. And we're actually already using quite a bit of our um, of our beach here, but it's not fully used yet. And what we want to do is work with this base, so one lumberjack hut, two of those, two of those, and four of those to start with. And that should be it. With all these things, we will be able to produce um, windows. And we are going to enable the glass makers first. And then as soon as we have money, 
which we need a lot of, we can make the windows. Um, so more money means that we should be upgrading some of those again. Um, that will help us to make progress. And this is something that you will be continuously doing while you build your city. Um, is upgrading to a higher level. And at a later stage that might become an issue because it also means um, that of course you need higher needs all of a sudden. Of and that will um, impact also your supply chain. So now it will still be okay but at a later stage we might get into some issues. Um, what you can see here also is that my sides are not covered by the correct buildings. So this is why I am upgrading first the center. But I should actually take care of that a little bit. Uh, so that's something we can resolve by building um, momentarily of course because we don't need it once we have the artisans. Momentarily we can build a marketplace here and that should enable these people to actually upgrade. We need to do the same in this corner. Because of course they have a certain area that they want to walk to and then outside of that area they're not so interested. So this will help us. We are waiting for bricks as usual. This seems to be a huge issue. All of the bricks all of, of the time. Because we do not really have the time to... Um, to wait for that. And I do have sufficient workforce. So I might actually invest in one more set of these buildings. And an additional warehouse to go with it. That should help us quite a while. There we go. So scaling up production is important. I think we're now using all of the brick factories on my entire island. So very good. We are waiting for money. Meaning we should upgrade some more of these. And we do have sufficient farmers. Alright, so... I did uh, upgrade some of my members, but then I had a thought that actually is much more important. Um, I am not giving uh, some of my workers the um, luxury goods that they need. And actually supplying luxury goods is a good way to make more money uh, overall. So what I am going to do is I have set out here the production chain for beer. Which both my workers and my artisans actually need or want. Um, and the way I have done that is by building two more grain farms that produce uh, every 30 seconds uh, one grain. One malt house to turn it into malt. Uh, and then three hops farms to make the hops needed to also every 30 seconds have uh, hops available. And then we are turning that into beer using two beer breweries. Uh, and this of course is the malt house. So I hope that this will be a solution to the money problems I have. So let's put it to the test. Let's uh, upgrade these two uh, gran uh, grain fields. Let's update all three of those. Let's update the malt house and the two breweries. And of course a warehouse to bring all of the stuff to. So with that in mind, first of course our balance is gonna go down because we're investing in even more infrastructure. But as this ramps up, we are hopefully gonna deliver beer to those people and allow them to pay more taxes. The other thing that we want to do is to ramp up our soap production. Because this guy here, makes you think Ally, is giving you. us 384 per soap. And we actually have the room for it and it's very close by. 
So that is a very nice trick for new players as well. Produce more so than you actually need and sell all of it to ally. So here we do need the money for the soap, but I'm already going to set up we assist however we may. this fleet and I'm going to set up a trade route. No, I'm not patrolling. Stop it. I don't want to patrol. I want you for to set up trade route. And that trade route is going from here to here. We're gonna load up here all of the soap that we can carry. And we're gonna drop it all off at Warmways Prison. Um, okay. Sounds good. We're just gonna do it like that. And I'm gonna make a new uh, group. So this is the old world. But I also like to have a group for uh, trade with NPCs. NPC trade. Ooh. So here we have the soap. Um, that will be going back and forth. And when trading and when shipping back and forth goods, it might also be a good idea to set a minimum limit of what you want to keep in your stock. Because of course there are also needs that need to be filled here for our workers and our artisans. Um, and we actually are gonna say that we need to keep at least 50 soap in stock. So what's gonna happen? These guys are going to produce soap all they can. They're gonna fill it, but the ship will only take the excess that is above 50. And the expectation is that while the ship is away, it will refill. But we are keeping this 50 in stock just to make sure that we never run out ourselves. Because running out of materials is also the best way to um, make sure your economy crumbles. What we see here is that our balance is going up massively. So that is uh, because we are now, I think, delivering beer to our workers and our artisans. And that, of course, raises our taxes. One of our ships is under attack. That's not something we like. So that is one of the pirates. Um, and we actually should be starting to work on getting um, yeah this resolved but I can request a ceasefire what she will do is answer with a request for money um, so I'm gonna wait until I actually have a reasonable chance of being able to pay it so that's gonna be taking a while I like the bottle. It's the boss. so here we have our soap up and running Ship under attack um, a trade what agreement do we have Talo? Has ended. Talo is also being overproduced. Pigs are being underproduced because of course we have not yet put uh, these silos well. next to all of our pig production. And what do we see here? We have just traded with Ally. This was a very, very good trade. Actually, we are being shot at, so this will sink. But we have 40,000 coins now. And that actually, if I'm quick, might be sufficient to request a ceasefire. I'm gonna accept. Did I survive? A ship was destroyed. No. I was just too late. Sorry, guys. My dear, very brave... Uh, sailors just died a horrible death attacked by pirates one second before I agreed to a ceasefire but I'm not too um, yeah I don't see it too big of an issue in that I do have the the goods to make new ones and I'm gonna set up a new trade route with one of those new schooners so the 20,000 really helped me there we said we wanted to update storage, which we did. We wanted to build our first ships, which we did. We set up trade routes that we did also. 
we started our beer production, we started weapon production. And the next thing that we want to do is actually build a ship that can take us to the new world. And for that reason, I'm going to go for a ship of the line. That's the most expensive one. Um, it takes quite a while as well. So maybe let's go with the, with the forget first. That's only half of the time. I'm gonna build two of them immediately. Um, one of them will go on an expedition to the new world. And the other one I intend to use to at least have Flagship some security here orders. in case war should break out. I'm going back in on my diplomacy screen and I'm gonna Make flatter some more. Um, although it's not looking Sun's so good in most of the cloud. cases. Cold this guy normal. really doesn't like me. Every time I try, he just um, yeah, gets more pissed off. So he's probably gonna be the first um, the first enemy I get. Uh, I don't know how I can best solve that here. Um, I can ask what for a quest, quest but he doesn't have one, of course. Um, there we go. Um, let's get back to our city, and this time we should have goods to start at least a little bit of window production think, I think. and the glass can go on again as well so we have our first frigate and that will mean that our new world expedition can get going um, to go there we're gonna click on it and we're gonna assign a ship we will choose the Kraken Skull. Um, and what I want to do is I want to try making it to the other side with the needed building materials already on my frigate. Uh, because that will allow me to, once I get there, immediately shut, set up shop. So I'm going to just take steel beams and timber as well as... Uh, do I want the bricks as well? Maybe in the beginning I don't necessarily need that. So I'm just gonna take more timber. And what that does is it does not fill these needs here. So I only have naval power that I need. But I have very high morale. So that will help me to at least go career into the unknown. In a very brave and positive morale way. So we're actually gonna start this expedition there we go we're just gonna take all these building materials and we're gonna start sailing for the new world that's a very big moment um, let us see here the ship how beautiful it is it's gonna pass us while we go here and the question I have is, can I go in first person mode while on the sea? So I'm gonna try this. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that did not work at all. That uh, teleported me. Probably there is some other very nice uh, way to show that. But this also works. Look at it. Look at it go. Oh my god. The kitty is on the sails on all of them actually. It's beautiful and we are sailing for the new world. So I think that's a very good, uh, although quite hectic uh, episode. I'm going to quit right now. I'm going to leave the rest of it to the next episode because we've done quite a lot already. It did feel a bit more managerial as I would have liked. Um, but that's yeah part of the game really so thanks for watching make sure to hit the and my city is on fire of course my city is on fire that is not surprising at all so as I said make sure to hit the subscribe and the like button if you like this video and I will be back with the next episode bite us out